Welcome back to Geek Show Arcade. Hey guys. Hey. Beep. Boop. It's been another week. Here you are again. You it's still been a week. I am. You keep coming back like a dog returning to its vomit. Here yep. we are. Geek Show they Arcade. They don't always do that. Let me just tell you, as a non-dog <laughs> owner, you wouldn't know this, but they don't always do that. Sometimes oh. I'll just let it sit and wait to see if they will. Doesn't happen, <laughs> I'll be, huh? I'll bet go get that. Go eat it. And they'll be like, Ugh, no. No, that's gross. It's puke. And I got three big I dogs. Do that. I got three big dogs. And so <laughs> let me just tell you, they don't always eat their vomit. And really, that do really Do they sucks. eat each other's? No. Surprisingly, they're like, ugh, hmm. like, came out of her. Hmm. Eat that. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, this is Geek Show Arcade, where we talk about video games and video game related things, occasionally dog puke, uh, which seems to be today. Uh, but speaking of the gaming industry, dog puke right there. <laughs> it's, uh, it, Nailed it. I really think like it's it's never been worse than it is right now. I don't think, but we're gonna get Which into is weird. that. We're coming off a banner year. Yeah, anyway. we're, and we're gonna get we're gonna get into that. Do we have um, more layoff news today, Tony? Yes, yeah. we do. Yep. It's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna have a segment. We're gonna have a sound for it and everything here in a second. Yeah, it's it's turning into the BS of uh, of arcade. It's this the is, layoff section. Yep. LS. The LS. But uh, let's introduce our panelists before we get into the into the sad news mm -hmm. of the arcade stuff. Coming at you live, it's Owen. Hey, coming hey, at you. It's me, you. Owen. You can catch me here. I That's not to do funny, it. You Lando. You were supposed to do that You're... last episode. Where were apparently. you? That was even more offensive. <laughs> oh, I'm here That's this time. Go ahead. I'm That's... sorry. That's me. It's Owen. I'm here. I'm not going to say my catchphrase. But this is where you're you have get the best a catchphrase. Yeah, this is where you're gonna get the best of me. There it is. I said it anyway. Ah! Catchphrase. You got him. You got him, Jaron. Well done. Catchphrase. All right. Uh, he's Lando. That's all I got. I don't have a catchphrase, and I'm Lando. I'm here. I, you guys typical. understand typical. the the deal with Arcade and Lando. So we're just gonna move on. All right. And he's more enthusiastic than Lando because he actually contributes. It's Jaron. I have hey. two stories. I contribute. I have, I have oh, zero today. So, Lando, I don't. Lando's standing over me with stories today. <laughs> Guys, this is my intro, not yours. Ah, We're gonna hey, hijack it for sure. And we have a host. His name is Tony. Hey, check me out on Twitter at Quad T Tony or on the, on other Geek Show podcasts. Let's see. Um, I think we have a mail, right? An email. We got two. Whoa. Email. Is it a kind of email? No, we got two full emails. Well, one's two. kind of an email. One was sent to help desk, but it's about the Nintendo Switch too. So, oh, yeah. that it says, "Hey here. everyone, Vaughn here, and I just got a notification regarding some news about something called a Nintendo Switch Two. Yep. I've never had or been interested in a Switch, but thought you guys might be interested." Yeah, so some stuff has been supposedly leaked. We don't know if it's true or not. Um, but it's talking about how much RAM a Switch 2 would have, which is 12 gigabytes. Uh, much more than the 4 that the original had. Yeah. So that that's a big boost. Like three times as much. Yeah. You um, have to click in to see those specs, Tony. Why can't, why can't Nintendo just be like normal and leave a Switch in a bar somewhere on a seat? <laughs> like Seriously, Apple, <laughs> yeah, Apple yeah, ago. come on. Deep cut, I love it. Mm. Uh, anyway, so the RAM they're saying will have seventy five hundred mega transfers per second. So it's fast, it's fast it's, RAM. it's mobile RAM. It's not like fast fast RAM. It's decent. Um, and then two hundred fifty six gigabytes of storage, supposedly. Uh, Jerry, we'll we'll show see. Me, show me a desktop that has seventy five hundred mega transfer RAM. I'm talking about VRAM, buddy. VRAM. It's shared RAM. I know. Just, VRAM is normally a lot faster than that. Oh, yeah. I wonder if Nintendo is going to plan for the the progression of games getting larger and larger and larger, and have removable storage. Well, they already support like micro SD card, man. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they started that with this switch, the, the current I, one. I didn't know that. <laughs> So there you go. Yeah, they were one of the first ones. that's just like you know what? Let's just use an off-the-shelf part that is affordable in our that's system. Right. That's right. I seem to remember that Jaron bought one of those as we were talking about licking cartridges back when the Switch first. Sounds about came right. Out. I forgot yeah. about licking. If James cartridges. was here, we could mention Bluetooth, but yeah. he's not. He's Bluetooth. Not. I, I save that for him when he's here specifically. They also talked in the leak, I think, about the. Uh, potential gpu capabilities how many cuda cores and stuff it has does that does it have that there 
It does not. Not this article, no. All right, let me see. I bet I can find More it. More live Googling. Nintendo already, seems like Yakuza. How did this leak get out? Do we have any clue? That's the weird like, part is like it, it got leaked out because someone was reading... Um, patents? No. Uh, shipping manifests. Oh. And I'm like, why would this be on the shipping And it manifest? had all the specs in the yeah, shipping manifest? Yeah, it had manifest? the specs on it. That's I don't deep. know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it's true. This so, is yeah, going, take it with a grain is, of salt for this sure. This is going Though, to this address in Japan, and also here's all the specs on it. Like what? I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't doesn't but, pass pass the sniff test. But mm. they were saying, uh, oh no, this is the wrong one. Anyway, it was it, it basically sounded like it was about the equivalent of like a thirty fifty or a thirty sixty. That's which, still a huge leap. Is yeah, it's talking like basically uh, PlayStation Four between PlayStation Four and Xbox Series S power. Still gonna uh, be four. While AP. it's docked, obviously not while it's in your hand, because it'll have to have. A much... What do you mean obviously? You don't know this. We don't have the specs yet. Yeah, so because obviously they have, it is obviously because there's no way they're gonna get a handheld that has good battery life with four plus teraflops of power. They're gonna That's clock fair. the chips down. Maybe it's, you don't know. Yeah. Way maybe, they, down. maybe they're special. Maybe they'll figure it you out. Get like about, like you get the, the Steam Deck is at 15 watts TDP, yeah. and this the the Switch will probably be at like four or five watts TDP. The original That's Switch fine. was yeah yeah like around five watts or less. So anyway, hmm. yeah. Kind of cool. We'll we'll see. Nintendo did announce that they will not. They they are gonna have the Switch Two Something within the next calendar year. or the next fiscal, oh, fiscal year, fiscal, which is like uh, July. And then next year. and then they specifically said we're gonna show off games in June. There will be no Switch Two yeah, news. They made Just sure of games, that. and everybody went not going. <laughs> yeah, who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> okay, I got another email from Juan about Fallout. He says, "Hey all." Long time listener, first time emailer. I just finished the Fallout series and loved it. So good. Yeah, yeah. Tony got that sweet Vault Tech hat right there. That's right. Wearing it right now. Vault Tech, baby. So, does it get better? Like, episode two is kind of boring. Get out of here, Jaren. Just keep it's watching. It's so good. Anyway, he, uh, Juan episode says. Episode two is not boring. You're boring. It kind of is. I'm interested in playing the games, but saw that there are tons of different games slash titles. I have limited time, so if you could only recommend one or two to play, which would you recommend? I can get access to all consoles if that helps. Thanks. Lando well, said three. Or three or New Vegas, I think, would probably be the two recommended ones See, I, I would say. I would disagree. It's fine. I would go New Vegas and four, because I think four has better explorability than three does, but New Vegas has the best story of them. I've never played New Vegas, so... I can't say much about it. You hmm. just did. You recommended it. It's based off of Tony's recommendation, honestly. <laughs> it's a second I mean, party. It's a second. It's a second hand recommendation. The reality of it is, you can't really go wrong with any of them because they're all. Mm, I would not recommend one and two. No. Oh, sorry. I meant of the new Bethesda ones. Three, three New Vegas or four. Well, New Vegas is an obsidian. I just, title, I just remember. I think but... for me, I'm a little, I'm a little jaded because I played. My brother recommended that I play three, and I'm like, what is this game? I knew nothing about it. Ooh, and I, I had was fun then. it was super fun, and I just, yeah. it was a great experience for me. Um, and the story just sucked me in. It was one of those like one of the greatest games I've I've ever played, just because it was just a great story. I don't know, I liked it a lot. It's very good. There you go. The end. Thanks for writing in, Juan. Juan, thank you. Jaron, is there anything else? No, if there were, I'd be talking right now. Space. Okay. We don't know that, Jaren. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> you you have to use talking. your voice words. At the last episode, you did have things to say, but you were stuck on some sort of loop of <laughs> silence. You just stared off into space. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly I my point. <laughs> I wasn't even here last week. Uh huh. All right. Um, okay, let's get the bad news out of the way first. Oh, man. I put these, I emailed these to myself. These this article about uh, layoffs and then bigger, more uh, layoffs overshadowed by layoffs. other layoffs. <laughs> yeah. These layoffs got overshadowed by other layoffs. So before Microsoft did their crap last week, yeah. Um, take two, which, which is ironic because I think three weeks ago or four weeks ago, I said, take two, we'll, won't see any layoffs because they just bought uh, Gearbox. 
Uh, I was wrong. Um, take two is how lucky did they get that they announced this right before Microsoft? Oh man, <laughs> their 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 layoffs just got completely swept under the rug because of Microsoft layoffs like three days later. So they have uh, lay they have closed um, Roll Seven and Intercept Games. Roll Seven was the company that made uh, Ollie Ollie Ollie. And Ali Ali Ali, or just two Ollies, sorry, Ali Ali and Ali Ali World. And they made that really interesting cell shaded uh, roller skating one called Roller Drome, where it's like s- arena fighting on roller skates. Huh. Kind of, you know, with roller derby stuff. That roller game looked really guns. cool. It did. And yeah. I, I think I bought, I bought it. I just haven't played it yet. But uh, so I did my part. Jeez, take two. So yeah, they closed them off, which is a shame because they're making unique, interesting games. And then they closed this other one. Um, where'd it go? Intercept Games, who is the team that's working on Kerbal Space Program Two, which I did not. I definitely did not see that one coming because the Kerbal Space Program crowd is pretty passionate about those games. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was very weird to see that. So it that's technically an early access. Uh, still at this point, but I guess they're so just... never going to go live, never yeah, going to go just full now. Never go full full release. So there you go. Um, that was roughly 70 people between the two um, teams. And yeah, it's just, it's getting to the point where it's it's getting ridiculous here. So just every week there's new layoffs and it's really sad the end of the story that's, that's thank the goodness end. it's a sad story i don't like it yeah um now we get to talk about, let's talk about people that got promoted in the games because everyone loves to hear about new ceos you know the guys that do all the work the ones doing the layoffs those I'm, jerks i'm being sarcastic here also that's your Yo. story jaron uh yeah uh, jim <laughs> ryan story, his, he had very big <laughs> shoes to fill so they they chose two people to do that uh so two CEOs, gonna, two CEOs to to make a ton of money and lay off even more people, I'm sure. Uh, but one of them is what's his name? Yeah, Hideo Hid, 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 Hideaki. Hideaki Nishino, mm-hmm. who is currently serving as the senior vice president for the Platform Experience Group. Um, he'll be, become the CEO of Platform Business Group, and then Herman Holtz was he a part of? Uh, Gorilla Games? Um, uh, you know what? Keep going and I'll look it up. I don't think so, but maybe. So, um, anyway, so Herman Holtz, he'll take on the role of the studio business group after being the senior vice president and head of PlayStation Studios. So uh, Nishino, he'll be in charge of commercial operations, including sales, marketing for hardware, services, peripherals. And Herman Holtz, he will be heading up the content development across PlayStation consoles and PCs. Woo! And he I also love be, that they mentioned PCs. Yeah. Okay, no, he was at Guerrilla Games. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sweet. So we get, got an actual someone guy. who actually yeah. makes games. Yep. And he also be in charge of developing video game adaptations for movies and TVs. Hmm. hmm. Movies and TV. So, Jaron, I, I I'm gonna ask you a question. It's gonna make me sound like a jerk, and I I acknowledge that. Yeah. But it's why should I care about the story? I, I I'm having a hard time caring about the story more than usual. Okay. <laughs> what was okay. the question? Yeah, what was the question? Why, 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 why do I care about the story? Like you brought oh. the story, but why is it a big deal? Like help me no. understand why it's a big deal well, that they're getting two, C- two CEOs now instead of one. Because Jim Ryan leaving That's was a big, a big deal, deal. Yeah. and Sony okay. is one of the biggest video game companies out there. So oh, okay. change of leadership could mean a change of direction, and they've been pretty successful with releasing PC games. There and it, it seems like we have uh, people who are supportive of that. A new leadership. So this is so, good news. Yeah, I think it's good. A little shake, oh. little shake up. Hope so. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see him push even further into into PC. And I think lately it shows that the market's there for it. I mean, Hell Divers Two sold more copies on PC than it did on PlayStation. So you know, and it's one of their top selling games of all time. Yeah, they need they need to start bringing their games to PlayStation. Or, I mean, their PlayStation games to PC faster. In my opinion, none of this two years later nonsense. You know, give give it a couple months of exclusivity if you want to on the PlayStation, so the people that 
get butt hurt about exclusives on other platforms can you know get get their feelings tended to and then and then put it out on pc and and make more money you know man i hate i i don't like the exclusivity crowd Neither do I. I don't it's I, I crazy. Think I just, me. I just don't understand it. Like everything can be cross-platform. They already have proven it. They just don't for marketing reasons. Is Nintendo hardware special though, because of those Nintendo games on it? They are for me. I love the Nintendo games. No, see, it works right there. Yeah, <laughs> no. Like, I, knew, you I, love, knew, I knew the assignment. I right? would you love <laughs> stellarly? You, exactly. Wouldn't you like love you to have play with somebody in some I Nintendo Switch game with your with your ROG ally? Like, yeah, oh, I would love to, and I do. Ally? You absolutely and, can. Uh, I do. Oh, I shouldn't have admitted that, but I did it twice. Dang it! Exhibit A would be a couple years ago in markets outside of the U.S. and Europe. Nintendo ported over a few Nintendo games to the Nvidia Shield. You could play them natively mm. on the shield. So I think they had Super Mario on there, something else. Anyway, yeah. That's good reporting, Tony. Yep. <laughs> Nailed it. I loved it. Nailed it. I thought it did great, guys. All right. Uh, let's let's keep the PlayStation news rolling and uh, talk about a PS1 emulator on iOS. The emulator train is keeping oh, on I going. Love- I love Let's this. Go. Yes, and there is a PS1 emulator for iPhone. It's free. It's called Gamma. The other one's called Delta. So I, I see a trend here. And the UI is pretty much <laughs> identical, even though they are different developers. Uh, so it's been rocketing up the charts, and there's been uh, there's a bunch of emulators that are out for approval right now, actually. Um, where did it go? Ah, here it is. So RetroArch, my favorite emulation program, which does all of the older consoles up to Nintendo 64. Um, it It's in approval right now. Uh, PPSSPP, a well-known PSP emulator, is also in the yeah. approval queue. And another uh, Nintendo emulator, which does 3DS, DS, and Game Boy Advance, called Foliam, is also awaiting approval. Interesting that 3DS is in there. I wonder if that will be approved, because 3DS mm. is a more current system. Granted, they're not selling any 3DS games anymore. Plus, they but... shuttered the uh, the online store for it as well. Yeah. So, so, good news. Yeah. And it was Twilight Princess, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, and uh, a couple others. They came out on the NVIDIA Shield in China. Like, you could buy them mm. legitimately Interesting. on the Shield in China. I'm particularly excited for RetroArch because that's you can tweak to your heart's content with that, and you can downscale, you can upscale, you can enter in a CRT filter, so you can make the games look really nice, unlike uh, the other emulators that are out there right now where it's just no settings at all. Yep. Hmm. 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 Well, speaking of emulators, um, oh, man, I left it in the other room. Um, I... Got a chance to play with uh, for a while the, um, what do you call it, analog pocket. One of my friends and neighbors has an analog pocket he let me borrow for a while. And you guys remember talking about this a couple, about a no. year ago, roughly? I wanted one of these so bad. So analog pocket is, and I feel like such a schmuck for forgetting to bring this in. Um, the analog pocket is an FPGA emulator that's in Game Boy form factor. And it is really cool. Um, here is a picture of one. Let me share my screen here. The, uh, oh my gosh, I hate you, Google. You're so lame. They got you. They got me. Um, so it's basically um, this FPGA that they've crammed into a Game Boy sized container, and it's got a R one L one shoulder button. And what, what is base what is FPGA for all the Landos in the world? Thank F- you. <laughs> it's like yeah. What is? I was F- thinking the same thing, but I wasn't gonna ask because I feel dumb. So <laughs> FPGA and generally me feel dumb. Uh, I got you. It stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Ooh, that sounds what, cool. It is very cool because what it does... Think of an ASIC that can be reprogrammed. Exactly. Right? It it makes it so that... Oh, I've uh, seen these before. Yeah, so so here's kind of what they look like. Um, now, the thing that makes these cool is it is actual 
the way the FPGA chip works, it's programmable hardware for, you know, lack of a better term, or maybe that is the exact term. But anyway, you can actually write code for it that makes the cartridge or the or the ROM think it's on the actual hardware, the old hardware, and it performs oh, exactly cool. like the old hardware. So you get pixel perfect emulation, like as far as as far as the software is concerned, it is the original hardware. And that's hmm. what makes FPGA stuff so cool. You could program it to any type of emulator? Or yeah, just as long or... as it's powerful enough. Yeah. So Wow, that's um, cool. The thing that sets this analog pocket apart, other well, I mean, everything does, actually, because it's one of the few, if not only, FPGA handhelds. And the screen on this thing is stellar. It's, uh, I want to say, like, two and a half by two and a half what you'd expect in a Game Boy, um, but larger. It is crystal clear. It has a stupid high resolution, and I feel like a ding-dong because I forgot to see... I'd love to see this thing. ...what that resolution was. Um, How about brightness? Is it a pretty good pl- screen? It gets plenty bright. <laughs> nice. Um, at least when you're indoors, for Probably sure. not play, playable. I was going to say playable outside or on a train or something, but... Yeah, it, 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 it does traveling. okay outside. Not bad. Um, but yeah, it, where's the resolution here? Gosh, dang it. Very high resolution. I want to say it's like (laughs) 1400 by 1400 on a two and a half inch screen. Yeah. Like (laughs) 1600 by 1440. There you go. 1600 by 1440. I wasn't too far off. It, it looks like you're like a 2k screen or no, not quite, but pretty close. Like, yeah. If you think of Game Boy, you do not think of anything near this fine no. No. resolution wise you think of big chunky pixels you know and it can look like that with filters and things like that, that you want to put on it but um you can put the actual old cartridges in it as well and just use it use your old collection they have different adapters for different kinds of handhelds right not so just game can, boy stuff you can do yeah. game boy advance you can do uh like game gear um all of those, a bu- or I should say a bunch of those. And I played it mostly with ROMs, but, man, it was awesome. All legal like, ones, I assume. Yes, yes, of course. Um, Thank you. If you, like, just think of your the perfect example of playing a game in your hands that is exactly like it was back in the day, and it's Couldn't you achieve the perfect. same thing on a mobile phone, though? You could. I mean, I guess I guess you got the hardware control, but so yeah, different. you don't have the yeah. buttons. And but if you got a, what do you? And you're it's using not as soft, accurate. Yeah, you're using software emulation. This is even hardware with your emulation. Kishi stuff and your and your your backbone or whatever. Like so for for filthy casuals like me, I'm fine me. with my phone. That's what mm. I was going to say. So that's where you come up against the only reason this is hard to recommend, um, because this is for your hardcore retro gaming enthusiasts mm. that want to play on the go. And if that's your thing, then you know, this is this is what you want to get. They are has the battery life. It's great. Oh. Um, they Those are take a ton of. I was gonna say the screen, maybe just the screen is draining. That would the be your biggest draw. Yeah, yeah is the screen. But the um, FPGAs are a little bit more power hungry than your typical ARM mm-hmm. processor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now that's true. But um, you're still emulating something much, much you know lower power. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, the price. It is uh, like 220 bucks. Holy roughly. moly. Yeah. I mean, that's what, and that's what Analog does. They do, they specialize in FPGA emulators. Uh, they found only... a niche, they found a niche, you know, yep. and that's not a, that's not an unreasonable price. If you are what you said, a, a retro, a hardcore retro game, gamer wouldn't even blink at that. So, yep. okay. Especially to be able to take it on the go. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it uh, can emulate NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, Turbo Graphics 16, all the Game Boys. Where's Twyman? He's got to have some of those old carts, like just holding oh, up I desks guarantee. and stuff. Start somewhere. Yeah. So, and you can buy adapters that slide in so that you can slide in the other carts. Mm. But yeah, they it's... have one for laser disc because then Twyman would be really. <laughs> Could you imagine yeah. holding something with a laser disc spinning yeah. outside of it? Mm. <laughs> So yeah, um, like I said, it, this is this is obviously not a super in depth review because I'm not a retro gamer, 
Um, but filthy I can casual. tell you, yeah, I'm a filthy casual, but I can tell you from the time that I spent playing with it, it is very impressive. It is really neat. I can see the draw, see the reason why people would want one of these if that's your thing. And, uh, you know, in in that respect, I got to give it like top marks, like nine out of ten. Now, for your filthy casual r- players like me, money. Uh, yeah, uh, for ev- for, for everyone else, like, for playing it, picking it up every three months, being like, oh yeah, this thing, it's yeah, just not, for, for everyone else, it. it's just not it's it's not the demographic. You know, mm. this is a very specific demographic, and for those people, it's an easy nine out of ten recommendation. For everyone else, uh, you know, two hundred twenty bucks to play. Uh, games that you probably don't care about playing that much. Obviously, this isn't for for you or f- for me, for that matter. But I super appreciate it for what it is. It's yeah. it is a rad piece of tech. So, uh, let's see. Moving along to we got Gen- another we got another on. A, I got a story on old N sixty four games. Kind of dovetails into. Retro oh yeah, game. yeah. When there's yeah, N64 yeah. games up in your stuff too, Tony. It's the same story. Yeah, we both oh. have that story. Yeah, this and is we just even the... have the same link, the Tom Hardware one. The Tom <laughs> <Nice>. Hardware. <laughs> Can't Sorry, go for it. Oh no. So, so there's there's a guy that's been working on. Uh, it's a it's his friend Wise Guy. It's just a tweet. Um, this guy retweeted tweeted says my friend Wise Guy has been working on a secret for a year, and what it is is it is a tool um, that he has called N64 Recomp. Um, and it basically takes any N64 game and recompiles it natively like a, you know, on, on, which is different from decompile. We'll talk about that in a second. A decompiled, uh, port is different than a recompiled, but it takes re it takes any N64 game, or at least that's what's alleged right now. They've, they've only tested a few, but basically any N64 game, allegedly, and you can, you can, uh, it recompiles (laughs) it and makes it run as a native port on PC, native Uh, application, native application and adding cool. I mean, adding graphical, uh, improvements, uh, features like full ray tracing. Mm -hmm. How about that, Jared? That's what's so cool about when it's running as a native application on the PC. Mm-hmm. It opens it up for mods. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And That's higher cool. frame rates, too. Higher, frame, higher rates. frame rates. Yeah. And so so you can you can get this. Um, you can get this. It's free, I believe. You can go get it now uh, and run if you've got ROMs. And it only requires ROMs to do it. And it just recompiles it. And you can run it natively. It's pretty cool. I haven't I haven't played with it at all, but... I want to see what some old games would look like. What mm. this is excellent for is um, game preservation, right? Because you don't depend, you won't have to depend on someone maintaining an, an emulator. Once it's been recompiled, it'll just run natively on yeah. the PC. Well, and, and decompile, so cool. decompiles too. So decompiles is where you actually basically um, uh, reverse engineer. You yeah, reverse engineer the game yeah. based on what the what the thing was and it takes a team of people it can take years um you know it's a long thing and this just does it on the fly as a recompile so i don't i don't understand that what recompile is i know what decompiles because i've looked into that but recompiling basically on the fly is a what if it's the same as transcompile if it takes the original source code and changes it into code that window i don't know that's maybe I'm not smart enough to comment on that, but yeah. it sounds cool. That's what I dove makes in. Sense to me. Jump in, Tony. I dove in. Come on, Tony. Oh if no, I, I just uh, the, I think... this is this is one of those things where um, you know I complain about people that just use a computer but don't understand how it actually works. Jaren's too tired to even come at me with it. So that's I'm that's watching only, the video. That's oh, me. Interesting. I, I, I am too stupid to know how this works, but uh, it's I awesome. love that it does. I want to use it. I just like that it works. You know, some guy. I'm like, <laughs> some guy was working on a secret, and it works. Okay, secret project. I'm in. Brandon Sanderson. I'm in. What? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Hashtags. Take my money. Yeah. This. This is. This is really cool. Um, it should it should make it really easy to preserve N sixty four games forever yeah. at this yeah. point, you know. Yep. So, all right, very nice, very nice. Um, Lando, let's kick let's keep the Mario train rolling. Ah, uh, this is okay. Tell us so this, about the this, Mario CU, yeah, the MCU. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I want to go on record saying that this is a kind of a half aid article that I brought to the the, the podcast tonight, but I think it's interesting. Oh, wow. So Nintendo, of course, after last year's success on the Super Mario Brothers movie, right, mm -hmm. are looking now to do a whole bunch more movies for Nintendo. Yep. Like Chris Pratt. It's, this is a good thing, Jaron. What do you mean, yay? Did you not like the Mario movie? The Mario no, movie was great. Okay. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. No one cares, Jaron. I think he said that was actually a very enthusiastic but low energy yay. I it don't was think actually so. Not, it wasn't. <laughs> he was, he was it wasn't definite, sarcastic. No, he was Were you sarcastic, Jaron? He was mocking Lando for sure. Oh, oh yeah. No, I, mean, I felt it. Pe people liked it. That's great. I, I'm you just didn't? I'm tired of connected on universe junk. On the, re on the record. Oh, see, I'm like not. I think, I think everything I as it connected stuff. as a universe is a better thing. So Chris Pratt, the guy who played Mario, or voiced Mario, I should say, um, wants to create the MCU, basically. He wants to create all the games in the same universe. Or all the movies, I should say. Um, which I think is pretty interesting. No, um, Nintendo's not going to even. They're mm, not. But no. If it could happen, I want to ask a, a pose the uh, the the Lang well, type question. If you could, you know, create a MCU, they, what movies would you include? They already There's did too this. Many. They already did this without uh, Mario, um, but the Wreck It Ralph movies. Yeah. Are your oh, video yeah. game That's your true. video game shared universe? And Mario and, was even in them. Yeah, and th those were a lot of fun. Or yeah, Bowser, at least. Bowser, what? Yeah, I, I I thought the Wreck It Ralph movies were really. I good. love those movies. Those are good ones. Yeah, for Wreck It sure. Ralph was pretty good. But anyway, I thought it was a fun idea, and I would love to see a Nintendo, um, universe MCU. So we just send our money to Chris Pratt or elect him president. Like, what do we have to do? Like, um, are... who knows? It's it's Nintendo. The, Nintendo will do whatever Nintendo does. Wait, is is he out of canceled jail? Chris, was he canceled? He was point. for a little while. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. That. I guess he is. Okay, that's awesome. Yep. I don't think he ever really got. No, he, never, he never bore the full weight of a cancellation. Nothing. There's nothing Mario can't fix. That's right. <laughs> you know, even Chris we, Mario also, heals all. We yep. also kind of got a shared Mario universe in the Smash Brothers games. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. A, that's a good point. <laughs> Didn't think about that I think one, that, Tony. I think that blew a lot of people's minds, and they're like, "Wait, my favorite character from this game is oh, now yeah. a combat able. You, I could take Kirby and fight." What are those guys that has Roy? I don't even know what game he's from, but no like, one you knows. Know. I, I rem uh, their Fire Emblem. I remember. Tony knows. When, of course I'm he does. Pretty sure their Fire Emblem. Um, when the first Smash Brothers sixty four came out, and I thought, "What the heck is this?" I saw the commercials for it, and the commercial was funny. It was a it was a funny ad back in the day. You should look it up on YouTube and check it out if you if you don't remember it. And so I, I went up that weekend to my, my local Blockbuster, rode my bike up there. Nice. And, rented uh, it. Rented it. Yeah. Oh. And started playing. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I hate fighting games, but this is the greatest uh, thing Star ever. Star Fox. Star Fox. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone yeah, went, everyone went Star Fox. Fox McCloud. Oh. Doing that high kick. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Yep. Falcon Punch, you know, Captain Falcon, Falcon. Punch. Oh, man. So good. Absolutely one of the best fighting games ever created foundational mm -hmm. in my opinion it pulled it pulled it, it pulled communities together mm. just like halo did when it came out on the original xbox right all and right um, kill aliens we got some more um pew, 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 video game news from square enix and this is also good news if you they ask me. are going multi-platform going forward they're not going to do any more uh exclusives very so interesting good. And they are going to aggressively pursue a multi-platform strategy. And they mention Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, and Windows PC. Yes. You have to these days because you, you need to address stakes. as many potential buyers as possible with the cost of these games to develop. Mm -hmm. yeah. so so they, they could either make smaller games or make huge games that go multi-platform. Exactly. Well, and, and, and studios used to have to be at the mercy of the console makers to give them exclusives so that, you know they could fund it but now it's just about getting it to the audience with like as to that the studios aren't as beholden to the hardware mm -hmm. and it's all especially open now considering now too that so much of the hardware is so similar as yeah, well right there's very little difference between yeah. the ps5 and the xbox you know like well, i don't get any value the, the like switch, branding but... branding for consoles doesn't really even matter to me anymore like i don't feel like there's a difference between the ps5 and the xbox like as far as like what I do with it, I know that some people just probably fell out of their bed, rolled over in their graves when I said that. But <laughs> it really depends but, like, on what games you like. Like 
you know, I mean, I. But they I, all run. They like if the game is done right for that console, or they all run the same. But and, oh yeah, from a technical you know? perspective, yeah. yeah, for sure, you're you're completely right. But the fact that you know Naughty Dog only makes games for PlayStation, that's a big selling point for people that love Naughty Dog games. Right, they, it will buy a playstation and, and playstation you, works really hard to maintain that relationship because exactly. naughty dog doesn't have to do that no they do they're owned by playstation they're first oh they party. are oh okay yeah yeah now in the case they of Square, could die with playstation as far as i'm concerned oh <laughs> that's how you really feel jerry I guess three for just, three, it's been three for eight years eight years yeah. since the last uncharted game guys jaren's just bitter that there's no more well three four three rule over three four three is also a first person first party studio but when microsoft moved it to game pass and xbox like or pc like microsoft moved all their games to pc basically like they kind of halo 5 survived. isn't on pc yeah. yeah they did not do halo 5 for some reason yeah no. well it's because they didn't want to taint every computer out there <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's i just think this is smart on square enix's part especially mm-hmm. since they're not owned by by sony or microsoft or anything there's yeah. there is literally no reason to do a a platform exclusive game if you're not owned by the platform maker these days unless because it just the the potential revenue (coughs) the potential revenue lost can i don't even think could ever come close to the whatever amount of money the company wants to give you for not putting it on the other system did did square enix break away from a from a console because i feel like square enix is one of the oldest studios they, i know yeah they've always been there they've always been they've their always own. been their own they well, never got hooked or by nintendo no, or anything they like merged they merged with uh, other companies other game development companies because oh. it used to be square soft yeah square and you soft. had uh idos and um was was enix its own thing i can't remember but then square soft and enix merged and you got square enix and yeah. then they bought idos and um but they never yeah. got latched on. They never. No, got they never got tethered down by a by hardware a... manufacturer or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, but they have historically been one of those developers that would, for whatever reason, put their stuff only on one platform at a time. Right. At first, they only had their games on Nintendo. Yeah, and then the PlayStation came around, and they only had their games on PlayStation until like the pl- the Xbox 360. There was back then. Architecture was so different, though, That's between true. the That's platforms. True. Like yep. it took a lot more development to take something that was on Nintendo and also run it on Sega. Yeah, you know, like you wouldn't. It was it was hard to do. Yeah, you know, when they ported to a different system back then, it was a, like most of the time a completely different. A game. full rewrite. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Speaking of that, I remember when uh, Resident Evil Two came out on the N sixty four, and it was just one of those things. that's like I can't believe they actually did it. Yeah. Resident Evil 2 with its full motion video and blah, blah, blah. They fit it all in a cartridge. It's a two disc game on the PlayStation. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm excited for that PS1 emulator, by the Blew way. Blew my mind. So, yeah. But you don't I, have an I, iPhone. No. You already have emulators. Yeah, you've had em- <laughs> emulators Android. forever. No. I know. I have an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have, I have an iPad. I'll admit. Here's my dirty little secret. I have an iPad. Oh well, even people that hate Android do you, sometimes end up getting iPads. Do yeah. you care how much gigs of RAM are in it? Yeah. Does it work for you? Yeah. Do you know it, how many gigs I, of RAM are in it right now? You probably I don't. don't because Apple doesn't like to tell you because they're I a bunch this, of jerks. I got this for free, so it doesn't matter. There you go. Uh, well, free, free is a different story. Yeah. Free um, isn't puppy or free well, isn't beer. You, Tony, Tony, you take a free four gig iPad, right? Eight gig, uh, eight gig, four gig. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> my minimum for trash is eight gigs. Six, six gigs is my minimum. <laughs> if it's a computer with six, I wouldn't take it. Not a Windows computer. Mm. You know, maybe Linux, but yeah, what would I do with it? That's the other question. All right, um, some neat uh, possible leak here for. Um, oh well, actually, in the last week, there's been the, the the official announcement and then possibly leaked specs as well for the next ROG Ally. I've been waiting for this. The Dina ROG Tony. Ally X is keep what they're waiting. calling it. Owen, keep waiting. Yeah, it's not coming out until uh, Q3, I want to say. And is it's not a s- huge upgrade either. And it's more of a side grade. It's uh, less of an upgrade than the Steam Deck OLED was to the Steam Deck LCD. This 
this is more of if you don't have a, an ally and you're interested in one, this would be where you probably want to jump on. So what they've done with it, basically, same chipset. You still got the, uh, which is a great chipset, the AMD Z1 Extreme. Um, but they have promised it will have more RAM and come with a bigger SSD. Slightly faster RAM too, right? Yeah, more. Right, more and slightly faster. So I'm betting it's either going to have 24 or 32 gigs of RAM. And it will also have uh, a much larger battery. Like they're they're talking like double or more perform like usage. Out That'd of be three. sweet because then you could play a, a full on AAA game at so full like, wattage for like two to three hours. Yeah, like three hours is what they're saying. You Darren, know, you're our battery chatting. guy. When are we when are we getting <laughs> those solid state batteries? I'm I'm done waiting. Never. Never. That, that's the, that's the point of that's, you. I think BS. that you need to go find yeah. a BS and and figure that out. I'm I'm ready for. Smaller... I already did. I told you it's not happening. I don't I don't believe you. <laughs> you know that's not the answer I want, Jaron. <laughs> I'm gonna do a. Let me go to the second Come on page now. of Google. Let me go to Google's ja- sec- second page, Jaron, where I find the results I want. <laughs> no, that that's now a third or fourth page because the there's there, too I much S- SEO and ads mm, before that. I'll, I'll go there. I'll go to the third page. I'll go to the. F- I got, you I've wouldn't. The, I've gotten to the seventh page. Whoa! Oh, when I've been trying perfect. to find some really, you really old, shows. dirty. You are a dirty old man. When I've tried to find some really, really old TV shows, that's what I've been known to go to go to the seventh page of Google. That's his nick. The that seventh his page. Yeah, that was his it's nickname. Like, old they, seven page. O- old seventh page. Seventh page o- yep. <laughs> they used to call page circle. But we named a page, <laughs> seventh circle of Google. That's right. So, yeah, uh, they're going to offer a black one now as well. So, like I said, since you're not getting a new chipset, it's not really like an upgrade per se. How's the rock? How's, how's, how's it, the ally holding up to the other competitors out there now? Like the Legion Go fine. and stuff in like fact, that. Like in fact, I would say it's probably still top of the heap if you ask me, because yeah, Asus would, has been better with updates than the other companies. Have I would been. I would choose it over the Legion Go over yeah, the MSI Claw for sure. Oh yeah, right. definitely over the MSI Claw. Yep, because it has a, a nice VRR screen. Um, the only one that I would consider over the ROG ally right now is probably. That new, um, is it Ion Neo with the clamshell? Oh, with the VRR screen? That has the VRR screen on it. Yeah, that one looks pretty sweet. Maybe, maybe. But that's um, also a lot more expensive. And so. they are redoing the SD card, so hopefully it won't fry your SD cards anymore. They made a point to say it isn't hmm. to fix the old thing because there was never a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're redoing the entire thing. Yeah. It has nothing to do with it, we, we assure slight you. slight firmware yeah. update where we yeah. turn off the part that burns everything. And yeah. it, it will allow larger NVMEs in there because it will support an M, M.2 2280 slot. Yeah. So you can get cheaper storage in there. So that's yep. pretty sweet too. So overall, it's, it's a really neat uh, quality of life and nice-to-have improvements. Um, but if you already have an ROG ally with the Z1 Extreme, I would say you, you probably don't need to bother. Um, it, had they thrown an OLED screen on there, I be would be story. super tempted. Yeah, that'd be a different story. But it's the same the same screen, which isn't yeah. bad. It's a great screen. Good so, screen. Yeah. Yep. Um, so and rumor, rumor. This is the rumor part. I saw a rumor that says it will start at a uh, hundred dollars more. MSRP than the other one, so not a huge price jump if that's if that's correct. Take that part with a grain of salt. We'll know more in June when they so when great. they announce the full specs and the full pricing and everything. This might be the one I go for since so, I yeah. since I keep, I had the Steam Deck it. and I wasn't eh, but and then the ROG I wanted the Ally I wanted, but this might be the one I jump for. Yeah, just wait and see what they uh, officially announce in June, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll see. But we'll keep an eye on that one. It's it's interesting looking. <laughs> Uh, and last but not least, Lando, generative AI in games. What do you got here? So this one is one I've had on here for a few weeks now because it's it's, it's fine. It's more of just a discussion point. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've alluded this to this a little bit, but I think it's even more salient 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 now, uh, especially if you li- listen to the um, the help desk show a few days ago. Yeah. Um, AI and like ChatGPT 4.0. It's crazy good. Like it's just crazy good, um, and it's it's interesting. We've had this discussion about movies before, where it's 
you know, you just put a prompt in. I want a movie about X, Y, and Z, and then you have a movie. Boom. Like, that That future is next few years, like, Terrifying. almost guaranteed. But have you ever thought to think about that same thing for games, right? So you, we, you guys play these games like Elden Ring and what's the other one that Owen really likes? Baldur's Gate 3, baby. Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate 3, right? Um, and in games are getting so complex to the point where the choices you make can lead to, you know, tons of different endings. But right now, all those endings are scripted. Like, they're all known by the developers. Um, so I was thinking about this the other day, um, talking to my coworkers about a game called Infinite Craft, which I'm sure you guys have heard of, right? Infinite Craft? Have you heard I of this have game? I have not, actually. I have I, heard of this. I have not. Infinite I've heard Craft of the name. is a fun, it's a fun little web braced browser game. I think it was done by the Neil.fun guy. Oh, this is the one that does the words. Right? So there's two words on the screen, and you combine them together to create new, new things, yes. right? And it's infinite. It's literally infinite. Dude, the way he's programmed this is with AI, so you can literally away. find anything. If you have ADHD or love dopamine, beware. I bet you money I lost, if you try hard I lost hard two enough. hours of my life just trying to find words on this. <laughs> you might be able to find Gadget Spot in Infinite Craft because yeah. it's literally infinite. You can, you can, you can get... Leia, like you can do a whole star. Some people go for a whole star, and it's just mixing words. It's just linking volcano and water. Oh, steam. Then you get the steam it's so good. word. And then you can use that to like, oh, my gosh. Steam and so... iPad can make Steam Deck kind of a yep. thing or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Um, and the way it's it's truly infinite is is AI, right? So we're already seeing AI used in simple games like that. but And wait. It's it's a matter of days between before we see AI Merge into a game like Baldur's Gate three or or Elden Ring, into Un- making it an infinitely an infinite real craft. game. Like think of World of Warcraft mixed with AI and the possibilities oh. and the story and the and everything that could happen. Writing in real on, time, a, like yeah, real time writing for yeah. you and the what you want to see. That's yeah. what, it's just that's it's insane Nvidia, to think about. Nvidia has been trying to bring that out for, or they've been showing off beta versions of that. There are for new chips that a couple might be years now enough to do it. Well, about a year where the AI generates dialogue for you to interact with NPCs as you go. Can you imagine though you pissing know? off a real N- NPC? Like, I don't know. Like, it's it would only take what's the, what is that time to time to Nazi or whatever? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like that. It Did wouldn't you take see, long. You saw the chat GPT. Jet GPT 4.0 stuff on, on TikTok this week, haven't you, Owen? Mm-hmm. And how crazy that is. Think of that it, with games. I, can you imagine the possibilities? That you know what? You want to know it's also a real, a real dopamine hit, speaking of that game, is that if you find some word that the database, has, the AI has never created before, and you're the first one, it tells you you discovered it. And it's been out for a month or so now. I played it a month ago or so, and I had a new word, and I was like, I must continue to find new words. But. I guess I don't know how this works because I'm just dragging water, fire, wind, earth around on this, and it's you have not to doing you have anything. to combine them together, drag them on top of each other. What's oh, the game called? Oh, on top Infinite of each craft. other. So, water plus earth equals plant. Right. Plant on fire equals smoke. Mm-hmm. smoke Got it. And wind equals cloud. That's not how Neil, that works. Be Neil, sure to, so so be Neil. Sure to go to bed tonight, slash Tony. Infinite dash craft. <laughs> go there. And uh, and you don't have to drag. I I think you can, can. Can't you? I'm not sure. I've always drag, drug. Before, oh. so I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Water and water makes lake. Eruption. Rain and rain makes rainbow. Anyway, okay. the the discussion point here that I want to bring up is just thinking about how AI specifically I... can can help games become better. And even in light of ChatGPT 4.0, how much better that's going to be? I'm interested. I like my curiosity is is there yeah. for this, but I I don't. What wa- they call I those? I don't want to see AI replacing people to no. tell me stories what, because I just don't they... think AI will ever be able to tell me a story yeah. that is meaningful and like I guess... a person. I don't know yeah. if it's going to be like full blown stories, but just think of like NPC interactions or okay, like that, side see, quests. That would or... be something else. Yeah, that we've I talked about get, that, that before. I could what do they? Behind. What do they call? What do they call those NPC just sound by barks or something? Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about we've that. We've talked for about sure. that. It was so where cool. it's like where like those would be cool if everybody experienced slightly different barks that were like. But you know, I... every time you came through an area, it was a 
like a different, slightly different conversation. Baldur's Gate got really close to that when you're in the Act Three and you're walking through the city. There is so much chatter that you literally never feel like it's repeating anything, but you know it is. So when I think it's taken to the next level, just above chatter too. It's like maybe some mini side quests or maybe yeah. different or endings. You, you or... bump into somebody and they're like, "Hey." And it's like, you know, you don't really just roll around them, the NPC, but like they're like, hey, or something. I, don't know. So they I think to... I just won Infinite Craft. I got to Black Hole. There you go. Nice. Winner. Yeah. Spent, spent, I think you can do it on the mobile phone and it's easier because you could tap, use your thumbs. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, kind of what you're talking about is similar to what Monolith Studios did with their Lord of the Rings games. Um, where they had the nemesis system, Dark where Phoenix. if you uh, going, if you dude. were to fight Don't a guy, stop. if you were to fight a guy and they run away and they get away, um, they might come back later, the same guy. And be stronger. Oh, that's cool. Because so they you train, don't, like the or, whole don't don't wound what you can't kill. Type yeah. Thing. Or on the other hand, if you get killed by one of these ba- bad guys, the other characters around him will can't see that he's win. the one that killed you, and they'll like start following him in his gang, and he'll get stronger. And so you have to come back. And the next time you come back, he'll reference how he killed you once already. Uh, nice. You know, Still trash talking like, like you yeah. again. Yeah. I thought I chopped off your head already. Yep. And That's funny. It was a lot cool. It's a lot cooler in concept than it was while playing the game, in my opinion. <laughs> in, but the yeah. potential's there for sure. So yeah. Cool. Nice. All right. So well, anyway, that's, that's my that's my topic story. Yeah, we'll we'll see how that uh, how that pans out as time goes on because it's definitely going to get experimented experimented with. You betcha, hundred percent. Um, we'll see it happen. That is the end of the episode today. Thanks for joining us. Before we go, big shout out to our awesome Patreon backers, patreon.com slash helpdesk arcade. Oh, almost lost it there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, If you feel like donating, and if you donate $6 a month or more, you get access to things like the in between uh, and the Patreon. I think Patreon Discord is for anyone that donates anything. Yeah. Yep. Um, Same with the in between. The only thing the $6 people get other than our undying affection is a shout out on the air, which is, I mean, who could put a price on that? Don't say $6. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Which Jaron has for us right now if he's done playing the game. Big bang! Oh, infinite crap. Here's here's my my discovery. Universe! He's done. My... My my discoveries that it saved me: Pickle Source Baconator and Angel Devil T Rex. Those are the ones that I discovered <laughs> on my own. Is Pickle Source Baconator a one discovery, or is Pickle Source a discovery? I had Baconator to. I, ha- I had to get both. No, it's Pickle Source Baconator. <laughs> Yep. Nice. I had to. I I had to find pickle. I had, first I had to get pickle Rick. Then I had to mix that with dinosaur. Then I had what to get. A, yeah. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah. It's so good. So weird. I, I'm it's at great, Rare Phoenix right now. It's a great toilet game. If you're on your phone, you can. Do, it's so much faster to do with your thumbs. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, patrons love you, Jaron. Go. What? What? Patreon time, Jaron. Read, read our. Oh, patrons. we're still on the show, dude. You. This is the show. I Jesus thought Christ. we were done. Thank you to David Broshinsky, Connor oh, Kesaw, Wiffleball Tony. You guys are the best. <laughs> you really are. Uh, <laughs> You you got me out of this infinite craft. Uh, Look at his eyes, infinite just loop. Trailing. It's just training back. Look at his eyes, just Jared, snapping back. Focus, Go back. focus. Uh, this is just how we, same way we ended last week. What is going on? <laughs> Jay, Jason, eat eat mon popcorn pyramid. Uh, Kaonda nope. Cardinal, Lambo 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 is three point six Rintgens. Rutchins. Rutchins. Andy Bird, be the eight year old. Tony, the home theater geek. Jeremy, no name, no color. Keslo, Eric Steinman. Eric Cruz, the in between parading. Pra- pra- rating. Plus seven. Matt Nelson, Harry Patch, Adam, Aaron Faulkner, Stuart Lloyd. The problem with society is there are no meatballs that can't be mountain climbed over. <laughs> what? What? Why does it say Mole meatballs holes. in my brain? Molehills. <laughs> Uh, Ryan M and Adam Hecht, thank you guys. Wow, we're yeah. just kind of shuddering our way to the we're end here, shambling kinda across kinda the shambling across finish. that line. Yeah. All right, that is it. Um, it's time to it's time to go. Owen, take us out. Hey, we hope you care. <laughs>